take a look at cleaning up a few uh, design items. Mostly the ribbon, the icons, and things in this nature. So once we dropped in the, the custom design in, inside of SharePoint, we started to notice that some of our icons, some of the SharePoint icons, like the gear icon, here's the help icon, the focus on content, and then when you start looking at the ribbon, there's other icons that just kind of get skew, uh, distorted and misaligned and, and changed out of place. So uh, there is actually a, um, a snippet given to us by uh, Dennis uh, Molotov, uh, who actually went out and found the CSS needed uh, in order to clean this up. So let's go ahead and apply that and clean up this ribbon. And then also the other thing we're going to cover in this video is how do you hide some of these wet parts when you're in edit mode. So as you can see here, I'm in edit mode and maybe we don't need this slider sliding around and maybe some of these other wet parts we want to hide when we're in edit mode. So that way we can just really kind of focus on the zones or even um, if this was a custom wet part, changing the wet part properties and things along those lines. All right, so let's get started. The first things first. So the first thing we want to do is to update the CSS. So let's jump into our project. And uh, remember the, the layout of our project. We have uh, the design file, which we just use as a reference in the master page gallery and the style library um, reference here in our project. And then if you drill down a little bit under the job portal directory, which is the name of our solution, we actually have this SP overwrite CSS. And this is, you know, as you know, just a recap on how we have this position. This is outside of our design package and really meant for what we're about to do now. Anything that's a SharePoint ism, once we're in SharePoint, we need to fix it. That's what this guy is for. So Dennis provided us this CSS snippet. So let me just grab here. I have it in Notepad here in a different screen. So I'm gonna go over here and grab this uh, CSS snippet. And I'm gonna paste it in. And when we take a look at this, so go here, paste this guy in. And actually, all you see is all these definitions, but there's only one implementation that's required. And really, it's this WebKit boxing, this mods box size, and all this other good stuff. So we're forcing uh, these initial values that's going to override this, right? and also by using important. Uh, we would just kind of force these. Now, you have to be careful. We don't want to blanket and do this for the entire page. If you look at some of these definitions, they're only for, they're only targeting those sections in the DOM or those sections in the HTML that are SharePoint related. And more specifically, they are SharePoint related with the ribbon, the wet parts, and things along those lines. So I don't have 100% uh, understanding on where all these are called i mean just by their name i can kind of guess where they're called but you know just to be aware that if you run into an issue where after you apply this you you know you have an issue just remove or comment out that section now dennis seems to be very good with css because i never used seen this asterisk notation and i have to do a google search honestly i have to do a google search to really understand what it's doing but it seems like it's more of a wild card you see that's what the asterisks mean right it's more of a a wild card so maybe any class that's prefixed with this or maybe where this class is is available uh and then just uses you know supersede anything that follows it maybe i'm guessing right um so but yeah this is the pattern and i i add a few items to it i think i added like the chrome title uh to it i think i also added like the sweet bar buttons to it or something like that but for the most part i had it just once he sent this over to me and i took a closer look at it i have a sense of what he's doing um so i, I knew how to add it because once i ran into other con items that were that were not um that were still distorted or still have an issue all right so let's go ahead and push this up and let's double check the effect that this is going to have so let's go publish this and now let's go back to our page now we're in chrome and i'm gonna just hit refresh and that's usually bad to do when you're in edit mode because you get all these warnings because you know it doesn't want you to lose information or content but we need to be here because we want to take a look at the ribbon. So just like that, just like magic, 
our icons for here. So we have we can fully see the gear icon, we have the help icon, we have a focus content icon. All those have the right padding or spacing that's required. And then also if you look into here uh, in the ribbon itself, you also have other icons that are aligned. This really starts to feel how the ribbon looks out of the box. So now we're sitting on top of our custom design and as far as like everything that's needed by the editor is it's available and it looks fine like even this wet part panel oh uh, see that's a problem so remember how we had to drop the slider into like the page layout because of this horizontal scroll yeah see that's a problem and it's pushing this over and that's gonna uh, that's actually a great segue into the next item we need to look at now the next item we need to look at but let me just finish this thought so as far as the the wet part panel and all this other stuff I mean everything is aligned you can read it now the icons are visible this looks excellent this looks great so what if you look at the description underneath this YouTube video uh, or the Facebook video depending on where you're watching us um, you will have access to that snippet and it's the modified one so it's all the changes that Dennis presented which is like 97 percent and then my little three percent of the small little items that I found and I added to it so Go ahead and grab that, drop that into your project, and clean up all of your icons for all of the uh, the ribbon and the what part properties and the edit section or uh, of the page, so that way everything kind of still feels like it's out of the box. All right, so let me now let's tackle the second item. The second item is we need better control. If you're if you're from like the WSP full trust coding. Uh, that type of building custom wet parts in WSP, you know that we, you know there is a, a, a certain call to where you can determine within the code if you're in the edit mode, which is this right here, or if you're in the live mode of the page. And because of the different modes, you can actually have your wet parts behave differently. You can present certain configuration options if you're in edit mode or maybe hide a wet part because it's, it's problematic or such a distraction when the content editor is trying to design and edit the page. So let's go ahead and find those switches uh, right here in the client side uh, development or the client side library on how we can change that. So uh, I found this, I, I did a quick Google search and this is easy. It was actually easy to find. And then I have this code snippy here and I'm gonna paste it in. So let's jump back into our project and in the services. This is where we will put all of our logic uh, for you know grabbing data, the business layer, the data layer. So what we're gonna do is go above the return object and put in our private method to determine if it's edit mode or not. So let's just do function underscore is edit mode. And we use underscore to help, you know, just from a coding perspective to determine that, easily identify that this is a um, private method. So I actually did a Google search on the code snippet, and I'm gonna just paste this in here. And basically what we're gonna do, uh, if it's design mode, so there's a check here uh, for design mode. And if that equals one, then edit mode is true. So we'll just go ahead and return true here. Uh, if it's not, that means it's uh, browse mode, but we're not gonna do anything for the else case. And then the second check, so if this is, so if not design mode here or not edit mode here, then we'll check and see if it's a wiki page. And if the wiki page, if it is a wiki page, the edit mode has uh, another property and where it has the word edit inside. So we we'll return true here. So in our scenario, we should never hit this line of code because we're only dealing with publishing pages. So we're gonna get a true or false here. So if it's true, returns true. If it's false, it's gonna test this, but that's always gonna be false. So then we would just return false if it makes it towards the end, okay? Now also looking at this, the one thing I did notice is that this will sometimes be null depending on if it's edit mode or not or if it's a if it's not a wiki page so what we have to do let's just make sure that we're dealing with a true object so this is so i'm going to do an inline logic test here that says if it's an object then grab the value of that object the value property of the object else return an empty string 
and I'll do the same for our wiki check here. So we'll just put this in parentheses. So this is an object, grab the value, else pass an empty string. Do a control KD to get everything formatted correctly. And the green squigglies are gone, so we should be good to go. All right, so this is our private method. So let, let, let's go and create a public method that we can pass back to the caller. So now our caller can, can uh, use this logic to do whatever they need to do from a component or template level. So let's just do um, is edit mode without the underscore. And this will simply return, return our private method, the value of our private method, okay? All right, so, and the cool thing about this is that we can determine all of this without making the Ajax call. So things should be still pretty snappy and pretty quick because all this doing is just, you know, doing the query against the DOM and looking for uh, this particular object that's under that form. Uh, if that object exists, it's gonna return the value uh, if it's a wiki page, you know, we go about it in a different manner or different logic, but there's no Ajax call that's needed. So our performance will actually not be impacted by this. So let's go to components here. And this is my slider component. And what we can do here, so uh, if it's edit mode, and we can just do a test here. So let's do an if statement test service object is edit mode so if this re if this is true or in our case false we do want to make this Ajax call to get the slides for the carousel oops so I'm just slide that up in here okay and if it is edit mode we just won't do anything all right and let's just save that all and that's going to save us a uh, carousel call. And then also what we want to do, so the template can, maybe maybe what we want to do is display a message. So if the content manager is in edit mode, uh, because we are going to hide the slider, maybe we want to put a message there that says, um, this is the slide placeholder or something like that. So in order for the template to be able to use this, we have to do a local variable. So is edit mode, and we just set that to the results. Uh, our service object, our service function, right? So this is our local guy. So now we can, I'm gonna save this off. Now we can go into a side of our template and just say here, ng high, if this is edit mode, so edit mode, don't show this. And that's vm dot is edit mode, right? Because we're using our alias. And this is actually a property. When we did that local variable, uh, we did it as a property. But if it is setup mode, we want to probably show something like um, h3 tag carousel placeholder or something like that. And then just put that ng show here so this only shows up when we're in edit mode. vm dot is edit mode. And I love this ng show ng high because this value is the exact same. These it's just these uh, directive calls right here, um, same call, different call for the same value, and that will give you the the right logic that you're looking for. And basically that's it. So if it's edit mode, show this placeholder um, text. If it's not edit mode, go ahead and do what we were doing in the first place. All right, so let's go ahead and push all of this up. And this is just a handy, handy feature. I mean, you can use this in many different ways. Like maybe if there is an error because, you know, they didn't set a property or they missed a variable uh, attribute because, you know, how we're using script editor and with the tags and all this other good stuff. You can do a custom message that only the content managers will be able to see by leveraging this switch. So it's actually pretty handy. All right. So we're, we're here in edit mode. Let's go ahead and refresh this. And so far, carousel placeholder, so that looks good. And now you look at this, our, our web part property editor is 
uh, properly placed. It's not shot off to the right and or anything crazy like that. So let's go ahead and hit OK here. Now, another thing to point out, I did not, I am not hiding the web part. So in, in our scenario, because we had to embed this carousel within the page layout, I don't, I'm not wrapping this tag in the web part. But for example, like job results, because I'm not hiding the web part, I'm just hiding the content of that tag. Uh, I still have access to these web part properties for those uh, various web parts or would need it. Or more importantly, uh, for our scenario, we can easily get to this edit snippet and manipulate this guy. So, and that's another thing. So like if we had a page that showed like 50 results with paging and all this other good stuff, you definitely want to hide that in edit mode because you don't want your content managers have to scroll through all that just to find this edit snippet since they put that at the lower right hand corner of that web part region. Um, so I think some, you know, hiding this functionality, one is going to make the page perform better because you're not doing Ajax calls when you don't have to when a content manager is actually designing or manipulating the page. And that's another uh, thing, you know, I'm just coming up with all these different scenarios now that we have this, is that when they start to drop these in, um, it won't execute right away. Um, so that way they can still drag and drop and, you know, move these to different zones and all this other good stuff, which is a pain in the butt if you know the wet part is um it's really that you know long and it's hard for you to scroll around and move things around and all this other good stuff all right so a lot of benefits there let's just continue testing this out so let's go to publish and we expect our slider to show up and there it is there's our slider so here we are in design mode it's there switch over to edit mode we get the placeholder text. It says, yep, there's something here, but it will be here. And then switch, uh, let's see what else can we do. Can we just save this? If we save this, uh, it pops up, so that's good. So no, this is, a, this is a good scenario because what this is, is this is a page that had changes. We just saved them. We didn't publish them or check them in yet. Um, and you you can still see the web parts and this is critical especially when they're designing a new page and they're not ready for everyone else in the organization to see it you still want the web parts to function as expected when they're not in um, edit mode or design mode or you know whatever we want to call that mode where they're actually editing and changing the, the page all right, so uh, that's it for this video. I uh, just wanted to point out those things. Again, thank you, Dennis, for your contribution with the CSS pieces. I think that really, really helps us out a lot. And there's another trick with, you know, now we have an edit mode flag and we can do some really, really cool things um, for the content managers uh, to really hint in errors and things along those lines or even just kind of get things out of the way while they're designing the page. Um, Again, just trying to be friendly here uh, as we develop these custom solutions in SharePoint. All right, that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next video, and I'll take care and check you out in the comments.